Every night, within the heart of the city, a mysterious occurrence unfolded in a park, under the cloak of darkness, a lone figure, a young girl no older than nine, would materialize after the hustle and bustle of daily life had dissipated, she'd settle upon a weathered bench, swathed in a tattered blanket, slipping into slumber, her presence sparked curiosity and concern among the denizens of the street, yet the mystery remained untouched, a riddle left unsolved by indifference and her officer. Julius, a recent addition to the local police force, a compassionate soul unacquainted with the city's intricacies, word of the enigmatic girl reached his ears, stirring a newfound inquisitiveness within him night after night. As he embarked on his patrols, Julius found his steps drawn towards the park, wrapped tightly against the autumn chill, flashlight in hand, he traversed the grounds, a silent sentinel on the lookout, driven by a need to ensure the girl's well-being, Julius scanned the shadows, his beam illuminating a solitary form huddled on a bench, approaching with caution, he gently roused her from her slumber, his voice a gentle murmur in the night, startled, the girl's eyes met his, and with a swift motion, she fled into the darkness, leaving Julius with unanswered questions lingering in the air, the echo of her hurried footsteps fading into the night, returning to his patrol car. A weighty sense of concern settled upon Officer Julius, the fear he witnessed in the girls. Eyes haunting his thoughts, driven by a burgeoning sense of responsibility, Julius resolved to seek aid from child services the following day, hoping they might provide insights into the girl's plight, however, his efforts were met with bewilderment when child services had no record of her existence, deepening Julius's unease. Sensing there was more to the mystery than met the eye, Julius embarked on another night of patrol, his determination unwavering, approaching the park with renewed vigilance. Julius kept a watchful eye, intent on catching another glimpse of the elusive girl. Fortune favored him as his flashlight revealed her form near the familiar bench, peacefully asleep despite the chill in the air. Proceeding cautiously, Julius sought not to startle her, but his efforts were in vain when she bolted at the sight of him once more. Undeterred, Julius gave chase, this time with backup en route. Knowing he couldn't let her vanish into the night again, joined by Officer Mara. Their approach aimed to reassure rather than intimidate, however, despite their assurances, the girl remained fearful, her cries for help piercing the stillness of the night, puzzled by her reaction, Julius resolved to uncover the truth behind her distress, determined to provide the aid she so desperately needed, genuinely driven by a desire to help, Julius understood the delicate nature of the situation. Approaching the frightened child alongside Mara, he witnessed her terror firsthand with a Gentle and reassuring demeanor, Mara spoke softly, We're not here to hurt you, we just want to make sure you're safe. Slowly, the girl began to ease, realizing she couldn't outrun two officers, aware of the girl's lingering fear, Mara suggested an alternative to taking her to the police station, opting for a less intimidating yet secure location, promising hot cocoa at a nearby coffee shop. The officers secured her agreement, comforting her with their presence as they departed from the desolate park bench in the warmth of the coffee shop, Lois, when she revealed her name to be, found solace in the promise of Coco, though she remained guarded in her responses, when asked about her parents and home, Lois's emotions spilled over, tears staining her cheeks when she confessed her tragic reality, my parents are dead, I have no family, I have no home, the officer's heart sank at Lois's heartbreaking revelation, a tale of sorrow no child should endure, though understanding now why she sought refuge in the park, the officers knew there was much more to uncover, resolved to provide the care and support Lois desperately needed, the situation remained unresolved, leaving the officers with more questions than answers, despite their efforts to offer assistance, Lois remained elusive, declining their offer to accompany her to the police station, instead, she requested to use the restroom, a simple request that Officer Mara granted, understanding the importance of empathy in such delicate situations when Mara waited anxiously, time seemed to stretch endlessly until she ventured into the restroom to check on Lois, only to find an empty space. Astonished, Mara realized Lois had slipped away through a small window, vanishing into the night before their eyes. It was a frustrating setback but it only fueled their determination to locate her and ensure her safety, feeling a deep sense of responsibility. Julius took it upon himself to continue the search, 
visiting the park there. Following day, he canvassed the area, seeking information from locals and regulars, despite their familiarity with Lois's presence, no one could provide clues to her whereabouts, leaving Julius feeling frustrated and at a loss, realizing conventional methods had reached a dead end, Julius devised a bold new strategy to go undercover, stripping away his uniform, he resolved to wait in the park, hoping to intercept Lois upon her return, it was a risky gambit, but Julius believed it was the only way to penetrate the veil of mystery shrouding her. For days on end, Julius maintained his vigil from his parked car, scanning the park with unwavering determination. Night after night passed without a trace of Lois, yet Julius refused to abandon hope, convinced that perseverance was the key to unlocking the truth behind her disappearance. Lois's elusive presence finally surfaced. Emerging from a hidden alleyway near the park one morning, a revelation that left Julius stunned, learning from past experiences, he resisted the urge to approach her directly, opting instead to shadow her discreetly, intent on unraveling the mystery that had consumed his thoughts. With a careful distance maintained, Julius trailed behind Lois as she navigated the quiet streets of the neighborhood, his senses heightened with anticipation. Each step brought them closer to the truth. Unveiling a grim and downtrodden landscape of dilapidated buildings and neglected streets when they approached a seemingly abandoned house at the end of the street, Julius's instincts flared, sensing a palpable unease lingering in the air, despite its desolate appearance, strange noises emanated from within, a disconcerting juxtaposition that heightened Julius's suspicions. Observing from a safe distance, Julius watched when Lois awaited the arrival of a woman, who ushered a group of children into the house before locking the door behind them. Shadows danced behind the windows, accompanied by the eerie hum of unseen machinery, fueling Julius's growing apprehension. Faced with a moral dilemma, Julius grappled with the realization that he couldn't turn a blind eye to the potential danger lurking within the confines of the house. Despite the risks involved, he knew he had a duty to intervene, to ensure the safety of those vulnerable children. With a sense of urgency, Julius swiftly called for backup. His voice laced with determination when he relayed the gravity of the situation to his fellow officers, though. The path ahead was fraught with uncertainty, Julius was resolved to confront the darkness that loomed, even if it meant placing himself in harm's way, he hoped reinforcements would show up shortly, armed with the search warrant required to take a closer look at the strange-looking house. Julius was waiting nervously when he felt a chill run down his spine, the door creaked open and a woman appeared. Looking sinister and holding a big set of scissors, Julius was startled as her inquisitive eyes darted over the scene, quickly ducking behind a nearby tree for shelter. Thoughts of young Lois raced through his head, pressing him to take immediate action. Julius staggered out of his hiding place and walked toward the woman, startling her. He introduced himself as a policeman right away. The woman tried to run away, sensing trouble, but Julius, fed up with people avoiding him, gave chase, caught her, and guided her back to the building, taking a deep breath. Julius lunged into the structure, his determination to save the kids burning bright, he was aware that he had to act quickly to avoid losing time, he was met with a sickening smell as soon as he entered the living room, where there was food containers, dirty clothing, and litter all over the place, disregardable walls and peeling paint created a depressing environment unfit for kids, Julius was determined to rescue the little girl and the others from their terrifying plight, so he called out to them. He handcuffed the woman to the staircase and started up, looking around the building for the kids in. A corner of the cramped room, Julius was met with a heartbreaking sight. There, he found the children, about twenty of them, huddled together, filthy, malnourished, and visibly frightened. Each child held small needles and yarn in their tiny hands, among them stood the eldest, a boy a bit older than Lois, roughly ten years old. Despite his age, he was shockingly skinny with a bloated belly, a clear sign of malnutrition. With bravery, the boy stepped forward to speak with Julius, revealing the harrowing. Truth, they had been living in the house for months, all of them street children from poor and broken homes. The woman who owned the house had promised them a safe haven, but instead subjected them to exploitation and abuse. She forced them to work tirelessly, day in and day out, 
making cheap clothes that she sold for her own profit, their innocence had been stripped away when they endured long hours of labor in perilous conditions, receiving only one warm meal a day in exchange when Julius ventured further into the house, he stumbled upon a horrifying discovery, a makeshift factory filled with rows of sewing machines manned by children as young as seven, anger, sorrow, and determination filled Julius as he resolved to put an end to such cruelty. Continuing his search, Julius looked for Lois, the little girl who had led him there. Moving through the dim rooms, he finally spotted her sitting at a small table, busy with a sewing machine, her small hands worked tirelessly, but her once. Fearful eyes now reflected exhaustion, it was a profoundly sad scene, a child who had already suffered so much, now forced into labor approaching her gently yet firmly, Julius assured Lois that he was there to help, the little girl seemed torn between her reluctance to trust easily and her desperate need for assistance, with patience and kindness, Julius managed to break through Lois's fears, and she burst into tears, finally allowing herself to confide in him when Lois shared the hardships she had endured, the police officer offered her comfort and reassurance, promising to keep her safe. In that moment, Lois realized she could trust him, and a glimmer of hope flickered within her for the first time in a long while. Soon, additional police officers arrived at the scene. They swiftly took the children out of the house, providing them with blankets for comfort. The children displayed a range of emotions. Some cried. Others were in shock, but all shared a sense of relief to escape the grim. Surroundings, the police officers contacted child social services to ensure immediate assistance for the rescued children. Social services arranged for the children to be placed under emergency care. They received not only a hot meal, clean clothes, and a warm bed, but also much needed medical attention to address the effects of malnutrition and minor injuries. Lois had endured months of forced work in the factory, but now she was finally free from that terrible place, however, unlike the other. Children, she hesitated to go with the police officers, Officer Julius understood her fear he had discovered some heartbreaking news while searching for her, it turned out that Lois's parents had died in a tragic fire, and she had been sent to foster care afterward, but Lois had run away from foster care multiple times because she was mistreated, and no one listened to her complaints. Realizing that the system had failed Lois, Julius felt a profound sense of regret, Julius learned that police. Personnel were the ones who had initially placed the little girl in foster care, which explained why she was afraid to visit any police station. Whenever she ran away, the police were the ones who tracked her down and put her back in the same bad foster homes, or sometimes even worse ones. This harsh reality further strengthened Julius's resolve to assist Lois in finding a caring and secure home. The young child clutched to Officer Julius when Mara walked up to Lois, hoping to find solace and security in his company, it was obvious that Lois had suffered greatly and had found comfort in Julius's arms, now that they were aware of Lois's difficult past, the cops understood they had to go cautiously while speaking with her, in response to Mara's gentle questioning about her experiences in foster care, Lois broke down in tears when she described the abuse she had endured at the hands of foster families, she stayed and worked at the house in order to obtain food scraps because she wanted to leave the brutality, Julius and Mara were deeply sympathetic to Lois, given the trauma she had endured her fear of the police, they realized they had to find a method to support her, the young child sadly shook her head when they asked about her family, implying that she didn't know anybody else and had no one else to turn to, during the interrogation, Lois continued to cling to Julius and offered Mara an idea, seeing that Lois needed medical attention right away, she recommended to the other officer that Lois be brought home with Julius, the story of Julius and Lois is truly touching and heartwarming, in Julius's place, I would have done exactly what he did, show compassion, provide support, and strive to create a safe and loving environment for Lois, it's inspiring to see how Julius went above and beyond to ensure Lois's well-being, ultimately adopting her into his family and giving her the sense of safety and belonging she desperately needed, Lois's connection to the park where she used to spend time with her parents adds a poignant layer to the narrative, 
it's understandable why she found solace in that familiar place, despite the challenges it posed, Julius's realization of the significance of the park in Lois's life underscores the depth of his empathy and understanding overall, this story highlights the power of kindness, resilience, and the importance of family. Julius's actions exemplify the positive impact one person can have in transforming the life of another. It's a reminder to us all to extend a helping hand to those in need and to create a world where everyone feels loved and supported, that's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story. After years of grappling with infertility, Sarah and JN found their hearts filled with boundless joy the day they cradled a black baby boy in their arms, little did they know that in just five short years, fate would deliver an astonishing twist, overwhelmed with happiness, they eagerly embraced the news that a darling two-year-old awaited them at the local orphanage. Their journey to parenthood had been fraught with disappointment, but they refused to let adversity extinguish their dream. When they gazed upon the serene face of the baby boy in the orphanage, Sarah couldn't help but feel a pang of sorrow for the circumstances that led him there. However, their hearts swelled with an instant connection, colorblind to anything but the love they already felt for him. Undeterred by the complexities of the adoption process, Sarah and JN plunged forward with unwavering determination, though paperwork piled high and interviews posed challenges, their resolve remained steadfast, then, the day they had long awaited arrived, a confirmation that they were chosen to welcome the precious two-year-old into their family. With eager anticipation, they bestowed upon him a beautiful name, Noah, and eagerly awaited his arrival into their home. Noah's presence breathed new life into their world, his innocence and curiosity a beacon of hope and joy, but just as they settled into their newfound role as parents, life presented them with an unexpected twist in a twist of fate. Just two weeks after Noah's arrival, Sarah found herself facing a revelation she never imagined possible, despite years of longing for a child of her own. Nature had bestowed upon her the miraculous gift of pregnancy, it was an unforeseen twist of fate. One that only deepened the wellspring of happiness in their hearts, however, amidst the unexpected joy. Sarah and JN harbored not a single regret about embracing Noah into their lives, if anything, they saw the forthcoming addition to their family as an extra blessing, further enriching Noah's presence, and what a beautiful revelation it was, Sarah carrying twins, their family was expanding in a manner they had never dared to dream when the months swept by in anticipation of the twins' arrival. Time seemed to blur until the long-awaited delivery day finally dawned, it marked the culmination of their hopes and dreams, the future they had yearned for inching closer to reality, with John steadfastly at Sarah's side, offering words of encouragement and clutching her hand, they entered the delivery room, there, amidst the skilled and gentle guidance of the medical team, the twins made their grand entrance into the world, side by side, each a precious bundle of joy. It felt as though the universe had bestowed upon John and Sarah double the happiness they could have imagined, however, life's tapestry was about to weave both moments of bliss and sorrow. One of the babies, with a hearty cry, brought smiles to everyone's faces, but the elation was short-lived. The room was swiftly engulfed in a solemn atmosphere as the realization dawned that the other twin had silently slipped away, despite the tireless efforts of the medical team. Their best attempts couldn't salvage the fragile life that was fading before their eyes. Grief hung heavy in the air when sorrow enveloped Sarah's shattered heart, her anguish was immeasurable, a profound sadness mirrored in John's eyes as he gazed upon the infant who would never know the world outside the womb, the ache they felt was a wound that defied the soothing balm of words, etched into their memories for eternity, however, amidst the shadows of sorrow, Sarah found solace in the warmth of her two children, Noah, the boy they had chosen to embrace with love and protection, had been their initial beacon of joy and light, the newborn twin, who, had bravely entered the world, symbolized the continuation of their love and the unyielding strength of their family bond, clutching onto the love they held for all their children, the ones they had lost and the ones who still needed their care. John and Sarah navigated through the tumult of emotions, Noah emerged as a source of solace for Sarah. His innocent presence a gentle reminder of the love they still possessed and the hope that persisted even in their darkest hours, in the days that followed, a tapestry of sorrow and joy unfolded, 
a poignant testament to life's unpredictable and fragile nature. However, amidst the ebb and flow of emotions, John and Sarah vowed to cherish every fleeting moment with their children, understanding the preciousness and uncertainty of life's journey. As time marched on, the family found their rhythm once more, their home reverberating with love, laughter, and daily adventures. Noah embraced his role as a protective older brother with unwavering dedication, while baby Elijah became a cherished companion in their familial tapestry despite his tender age, Noah's laughter and presence infused the household with a unique sweetness, weaving threads of love that bound them closer together, years passed, and the family's bond grew even stronger. Epitomized by the inseparable connection between Noah and his little brother, they transcended mere siblinghood. Evolving into steadfast companions and best friends, one sunny morning, amidst the brightness of their shared existence, a moment unfolded that underscored the depth of their bond, a moment when Elijah teetered on the brink of a fall, only to be saved by the swift and protective actions of his beloved brother, Noah, it was a precarious moment, one that could have unfolded into a cascade of more serious consequences, however, in a heartbeat, Noah, the steadfast older brother, sprang into action, with unwavering determination, he rushed to Elijah's side, halting his descent with a protective embrace, promising to shield him from harm, Noah's love and devotion shone brightly in that fleeting moment, but Noah's role as a guardian extended far beyond mere accidents, he became Elijah's constant source of comfort, the one who lifted his spirits with playful antics and shared moments of joy, however, Noah's talents transcended his role as a loving brother, his innate gift for music, particularly the piano, mesmerized all who listened, melodies seemed to effortlessly flow from his fingertips, a testament to his remarkable skill, proud of their son's accomplishments, Sarah and J.N. reveled in Noah's talents, however, their joy was soon overshadowed by a looming threat, at a routine checkup, their world was turned upside down, while Elijah was deemed in perfect health, Noah's examination yielded troubling results, the specialist's cautious words conveyed a devastating truth. Noah had been diagnosed with a rare and incurable illness, Sarah's eyes brimmed with tears, and John felt a lump form in his throat at the crushing weight of the diagnosis, the prospect of losing their beloved son, just as they had mourned the loss of one of their biological twins, filled them with a profound sense of dread. Meanwhile, Noah sat on the examination table, oblivious to the gravity of the news that hung heavy in the air, with hearts pounding in unison. J.N. and Sarah exchanged worried glances, grappling with the immense fear and uncertainty that lay ahead upon receiving the news. The doctors explained that while there was no assurance of a cure, a glimmer of hope emerged in the form of a new experimental treatment. Though risky, it stood as their sole chance. John and Sarah wasted no time in embracing this hope, believing it could save Noah's life. They swiftly enrolled him in the clinical trial, ready to battle for his survival, the days that ensued brimmed with anxiety and sleepless nights. Burdened by the weight of their son's uncertain fate, as treatment commenced, Noah endured immense pain, needles, tests, and agonizing procedures became routine, yet Noah faced them with a courage far beyond his years, a testament to his resilience, John and Sarah marveled as their son, small but mighty, confronted his illness head-on teaching them the profound essence of resilience, filled with admiration, they held his hand through the darkest hours, months passed, and gradually, the experimental treatment exhibited signs of progress, with the unwavering support of his family and his own inner strength, Noah overcame the challenges, his once feeble body regained vitality, as if granted a second lease on life, Noah's recovery unfolded as a miracle, defeating the illness that once threatened to steal him away. His little brother rejoiced to have him back home, their laughter once again filling the household with joy. When young Noah grew, the familial bond deepened. Despite the ongoing support from neighbors and relatives, curious glances greeted them when they ventured outside. People questioned the presence of a black boy amidst their predominantly white family. One day, Sarah faced a heart-wrenching encounter while out for a stroll with Noah, as an insensitive woman confronted her, questioning her motives for being with a black child. The encounter with the woman escalated to the point where she accused Sarah of not being Noah's biological mother and insinuated that Sarah might be attempting to abduct him. Promptly, the woman called the authorities. 
leading to the swift arrival of two policemen at the park, they trailed Sarah home and insisted on seeing. Noah's official adoption papers, ultimately, the officers apologized for the misunderstanding, yet the woman who sparked the incident remained unapologetic despite these trials, the family's love continued to flourish, for a fleeting moment, it seemed as though their lives would be perpetually filled with happiness, and they allowed themselves to believe that the worst was behind them, however, a year later, just five years after Noah's adoption, the couple received a startling call that shook them to their core, catapulting them back to the beginning of their extraordinary journey on that fateful day, the phone rang, disrupting the tranquility of an ordinary afternoon, Sarah picked up, her expression morphing into one of surprise as she conversed with the caller, John watched her closely, sensing the fear in her eyes when she relayed the unexpected news, the biological mother of their adopted son, Noah, had reached out, expressing a desire to meet the child she had once relinquished. This revelation left John and Sarah bewildered, while Noah was unequivocally their son, they also empathized with the mother's longing to reconnect with the child she had never forgotten, driven by a curiosity to understand the circumstances that led to Noah's adoption. John and Sarah agreed to meet with the birth mother. The encounter took place in a hospital room where the woman was admitted, when they conversed. They detected the tremor in her voice and the palpable yearning in her words she recounted being just 19 when she gave birth to Noah. Overwhelmed by the weight of her situation, compounded by her boyfriend's abandonment out of fear, in her vulnerability, she had made the agonizing decision to place her baby for adoption, believing it was the best choice for his future. The situation took an even more heart-wrenching turn when Noah's biological mother revealed the reason for reaching out to them. At the young age of 25, she had been diagnosed with leukemia, a terminal illness. With only weeks left to live, her deepest desire was to spend her remaining time with her son, the child she had once cradled in her arms. This revelation left Noah's adoptive parents devastated, their hearts heavy with sorrow. They understood that the deep bond they had nurtured with Noah would never fully extend to his biological mother, who had limited time left in this world. Despite their desire to shield Noah from the pain of death at such a tender age, Sarah and John recognized the importance of honoring the biological mother's wish driven by love and empathy they made a decision that epitomized the essence of parenthood they agreed to allow the mother to spend her final days with her son they understood that love transcends boundaries especially in the face of death thus for the first time since his birth noah was introduced to his birth mother although noah was initially curious about the woman he also felt slightly apprehensive about the tubes and machines Surrounding her frail body, however, in the weeks that followed, mother and child shared precious moments together, learning about each other and forging a connection. When the mother's time inevitably came to an end, Sarah and John stood by their son, providing unwavering support through the difficult loss. In the years that followed, as Noah grew and matured, he came to realize that he had two mothers, one who gave him life and another who gave him a future, both were cherished and integral. Parts of his story, despite the bittersweet ending, Noah found solace in the strength of his family and the love that bound them together. As for Sarah and John's decision to let Noah see his biological mother, it was a deeply personal choice rooted in empathy and compassion. While some may question the wisdom of exposing Noah to such emotional turmoil at a young age, others may see it as a testament to the power of love and the importance of honoring one's origins. Ultimately, it is a decision. That resonates with the complexities of human relationships and the profound depths of parental love above is today's story. If you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.